Hello, y'all on YouTube. This is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today, we're opening up a very special box, something coming in from TRM Tycoon. It's uh, Three Rivers Manufacturing. We'll be opening up this today. Something kind of exciting to look at. Uh, yeah, let's get into this and see what we got. Okay, I'm going to be opening up today with my TRM Neutron in the Lizard Scale pattern, Titanium Scales. This is my TRM Neutron in Magna Cut, by the way. So let's see what we got in here. Pretty excited to get to check this out. I wanted to check this out and I reached out to them and said, hey, you know, is there a chance I could maybe just borrow one to look at or something? And well, lo and behold, their generosity and so supportive of the channel, I they sent me one to review and see what we're going to do with it. I suspect I'll put the receipt off to the side, but I suspect this is probably something I'm going to be ending up having to buy for myself here. So because this will probably be a big, huge, very special giveaway for the channel. I'm pretty sure about that. So let's see what we got here. All right, so today we're opening up a TRM box, and this is the MagnaCut Bulldog in Jet Black G10. Okay, here we go. Typical little card that you have here with their warranty, which is great. They're awesome with it. Get a sticker. Obviously, the ghost is gonna go in there. Please don't take me apart. No oil, no oil needed. Thank you. So it's not that you can't take them apart. I've heard uh, like Lefty at uh, EDC. He mentioned that he did reach out to him. Is they would prefer you not to because a lot of people don't always know how to deal with a, an Omega spring and put things back together and making sure that's exactly the right size. So you know, it's it's some knives are just really meant to be taken apart very easily, and some are gonna be a little more challenging. So that's the idea here, right? I mean, I think that's what I had heard him say. So. You know, I can see that. I can see that, especially if you're not very familiar with what, what you're what you're looking at. So very nice packaging. I like the box. We're gonna put all that off to the side right now. Oops, if I don't drop it all over. All right, and so here is the knife. And one thing you'll notice, it's very similar in size to the Neutron. Look at that. Really, really close size in, uh, as far as the two. Now this is a liner lock. Has the liner lock on the inside between the two scales, right? So that's the liner lock. This one here <coughs> is what they call a river lock. It's a crossbar. It's a variation of the crossbar lock. And you'll notice there's little screws in here, and that's how they comes apart. I love the way they do that, by the way. Um, I, I had a shadow. Love the shadow. It was just one knife I never carried. What I like about G10 here is that not only did they nicely chamfer all the way around, what I love about G10 is I can always round this if I wanted to. Now, on their titanium, they're really good. Everything is beautifully rounded. There's no sharp edges anywhere. So they do a really good job of that. But on G10, it tends to be a little, a little more crisp, right? A little sharper because of the fact that, you know, this is what people want. They want the texture. They want all that feel for it and everything. And I get that. And this really, truly has that. And this looks to me, is that like brass right there? That looks like almost like brass in there. Hmm. Wondering if that's the case because that does, sometimes that can take a little more um, uh, usage on there. It wears better. All right, so here we go. Let's look at the blade. It looks pretty dead nut center. Yeah, it looks pretty dead nut center. We got a backspacer here, which I like all the way across. Now, you saw me. I actually held the very first prototype at Blade Show Texas, and I have a short on that over on Instagram. I think I published it in YouTube also, but I actually had uh, Marianne uh, allowed me to check it out. Les had brought it. Les is the guy who does a lot of the manufacturing. Marianne is the, the wife, and she does a lot of work with her. And then Hillary works for them, and she's the one I, I talk to a lot. Great, great people over there. There's a lot of other really wonderful people there as well that I really enjoy. Uh, it's a really good company. It's a USA company, if you didn't know much about them, who really stand behind their product and make a great product, right? So I, I, I can't rave enough about them because I really do believe in these people. I respect them and I appreciate them. And that's just the simple, straight up truth. I like this. It's a nice, looks like a titanium clip. Yeah, titanium clip, which is nice. Now it has steel liners. Yeah, okay, so that's steel in there. That must be maybe heat treated or something, or maybe they anodized, they're carbonized. I don't know, they did something there, but that's cool. All right, so let's go ahead. Now you guys are waiting. You want me to flick this open. So it is a river lock, right? So there's the axis lock, but let's go ahead and flick it. Let's see, we'll do the reverse flick first. All right. Ooh, that action's nice. Okay, there we go. All right, so nice and open. No blade play. There we are. There might be a little bit of room there. I don't know. I don't know if this is a straight-up PB washers or... I Actually, I read somewhere that they have a special uh, steel bearings in there. It's... I forget what they call it. If I remember, I'll put it right up here. But it's like 
two plates with the balls inside. So I don't know if that's something that, you know, you could put skiffs on or something. I don't think you can. I think it's a little different, but, you know, you can always check it out. All right, so like any crossbar lock I've ever had, there's always a little stick in the beginning, and that always happens, and it wears in. So this one has a little stick, which I'm not surprised about, right? I mean, all my Benchmades, all my other TRMs, just about every one of them has a little stick when you first open it up, and it does stick, it, but it breaks in after a while, right? And it's usually because it's fresh, you know, and you... Maybe there was oil on there, or, or maybe it hasn't worn in really well. Not, but I love, love, love the stonewashed blade. Full flat grind, right? A nice thin edge. We're looking at, is that, oh, it looks like it might be, yeah, it's definitely a little thicker than the, the Neutron and the Liner Lock. Look at that. That's a little more robust blade. Definitely going to be a more of a workhorse for you. So you, I think you can be more aggressive with this one. Now it has a finger trail. Oh, that finger trail actually works. Look at that. That actually works. Okay, very good. Now, I've got big, meaty fingers. So i got large hands with big, meaty fingers. So if you have regular size fingers, you're going to be an extra large hand. If you got thinner fingers, this will be your grip about with a very uh, uh, double extra large hand, right? So I've got room. Definitely room for, I would say, at least an extra large, big, meaty fingers. Maybe a double extra large, big, meaty fingers. It's pretty close. But uh, definitely some room choking up. You can see when I choke up like that. The thing about meaty fingers, if you all know who have them, you can't really go flat like this right here. You have to kind of go at an angle on a finger troll many times because our fingers are just a little bit wider than the regular person, right? So we go up a little bit and we choke it up like that. Nice. I like the reverse over here. It's got a little texture. You can definitely do like a push cut if you're going into leather cardboard box and you got to push into that cut. Or if you're doing a pull cut and you're pulling through it, right? That edge is crazy sharp. Love that. Let's look at that blade profile. Is it pretty much? Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Very similar blade profile. I do like that. Yeah, they, these guys are very similar. I, I remember that was one of the things that Marianne uh, had said. They really wanted this to be like a, a, the Neutron. The Neutron is one of their best sellers. It does really, really well. And I can see that. This has a really nice EDC size. Now, if you like really bigger knives, you know, obviously you're going to like the 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 um, Atom, which I have an Atom as well in this version. Ooh, you can see I use my knife. Oh, I just opened the box. That's why it's got glue on there. But I was going to say, yeah, I use my knives. I'm not going to apologize for that. So, but... Uh, very similar in that regard. Now I'm curious, it has a little blade rock, so it makes me think, do I need to possibly tighten that up? So let's look here real quick. As my new setup for my, my screws and my, my, my pivots. I think this is gonna be a T8, let's see. So here's a T8, let's just see if that's a T8. Is it a T8? Maybe is it a T10? I don't think it's a T10, is it? Ah, oh, it's a T10 for sure. Okay, so that's a T10. So here you go. Uh, T10. Okay, so T10. I'm going to see if it's a little bit loose. I don't know if it is. Oh, it is loose. Let's see how much. Can I tighten it too much? Oh, that's better. Let's see. Look at the centering. I might be off a little bit to the left still. Don't know if I tighten that a little bit more if it goes left and I need to do a little centering on there. That happens sometimes, right? Oh, that looks like it's getting maybe better. Nah, still a little left. Yeah, now I'm almost too tight, right? Because I, I lose that action. I lose that looseness. So I think it needs a little Loctite for sure. It's definitely a little bit loose. It came in, it was really loose like that. So we're going to be probably about right there is where I'm going to guess. Just when you start to feel it, it has no blade play, and there's the action. Okay. All right, so we, we can go through at the end here. I'll show you how you can easily center something like this. It's very simple to do. It really is. <clears throat> but uh, we'll do that here at the end. But there you go. Really nice action. I like that. I'm going to put my, my little screw set over here. All right, so, yeah, nicely chamfered all the way around. It is G10. This is reminds me very much of a Spyderco G10. I do see that a lot. Spyderco has a lot of aggressive G10s where um, it's really great traction. You're not going to drop this at all. Now, if you find that to be the case, it can be a little bit of a shredder in the pocket. What I've done is I took off my clip on my Spydercos and I would file that G10 down just a little bit. So going in and out of the pocket is not as hard because this still has a pretty, pretty good solid uh, retain uh, retention in there, right? And you are going to be relatively deep carry. It's going to go all the way down there. I like that. Um, We'll say it's a little sharp there on those edges. I mean, it's not sharp, like uncomfortable sharp, like titanium sharp, but it's not as rounded as you're used to with a lot of the stuff that TRM does. Usually everything's rounded and smooth and, 
you know, you just you get you get used to that. But then again, I also usually get the premium scales. And I do remember when I got my first TRM, I had the very flat scales. And this is very indicative of the very flat scales. And I know their goal is eventually to get the contoured scales and then do titanium scales for this. So they're going to be, you know, this line is going to have all the stuff that you're used to with all the other ones. So I'm looking forward to that. That's That takes an evolution. They're, they're not a giant shop. It's a family-owned business, right? And they produce as much as they can, as quickly as they can, because they still, they're selling to retailers and stuff. And so, you know, it's amazing how much they're getting done for the size, you know, and everything, but it, it's still, they're working hard. And, and you've got to have a plan to do that reasonably, right? Now, I do like the fact that you can do left-handed here. Now, they are, they do make some of these in left-hand versions, by the way. So if you're a lefty, you go, hey, that's not a reversible pocket clip. No, uh, they will make lefties. They make lefty. They, they made, a, I think, a commitment to make about 10% of them were going to be lefties for sure. So you will be able to buy a lefty if you're interested in this one for as a left-hander. But if you just get one and you want one right away, it being that it's a river lock, you know, which is the crossbar lock, it works really well left-handed, right? You can see that. It is nice as a lefty if you have the clip right there to hold a little bit better, but this traction is really good. So for me, it's easy to manipulate as a lefty, I mean with my left hand, and even though the clip's on the right hand side, because it still still works really, really well. So very, very cool. All right, so a lot of positive things. The river lock, crossbar lock there works really well. I like that. It's I believe it's an Omega spring in there. You can see that. You got these screw, screws. I'm not sure if the scales can come off. I know this, they don't disassemble it, and I understand why, but... Uh, I can see. I mean, it's pretty cool. My first impression is very, very good. So I I do like that a lot. Okay, so now somebody had made a mention. They thought one of the screws that went through here was a little, kind of stuck through a little too much. Uh, I was a little close to the blade. And I'm trying to see if I can see any of those screws. Yeah, okay, I can see these screws coming through a little bit over here. I mean, I don't, I don't think they're, they're definitely poking out a little bit. And I can see that, you know, maybe you don't want them to poke out. You can file that down when you take those screws off if you wanted to. I mean, that's what I would do, right? This holds the whole locking mechanism in place. And I'm, I'm assuming that these screws are going to be cross-functional with maybe a more contoured scale or something. So maybe that's why. But, um, yeah, that's, I guess, I mean, I've, sometimes people want to see that really perfectly flat on the inside. I can see there's a little, they stick out, but they're not close to me as far as to the blade. It, it is enough a concern if your blade, if your pivot gets loose and your, and your blade starts to travel over, you could probably rub against there and get scratches. I mean, but you know, you want to keep an eye on your blade, make sure it's locked in place and then use some Loctite if it ever loosens, if the pivot, you know, ever walks on you, right? So there you go. Yeah, I do like that. Okay, cool. The G10 is nice. It almost has a micarta kind of rich looking G10, which they do such good micarta, micarta at TRM. They really do. And uh, I, I'm not a micarta fan, but I like their stuff, which is weird. So I'll just tell you that much. I mean, the fact that they even got me open to the idea of micarta is weird. So yeah, this one's going to take some breaking into. I can already, I can already feel it right here. It's already starting to, yeah, it's not sticking as much. Let's see the, that lock stick that we, when I first opened it is going away. And on the left hand side, let's see how that works. Yeah, it's almost completely gone now. Just a few flicks, get it kind of broken in, and then it's going to sli start sliding really nice. Yeah, there we go. Well, now, think about a small hole like this. You can uh, slow roll it, right? You can do that over here as well. Slow roll it as well. But I can get my thumb in. All I got to do is get my meat. And I guess the benefit of a big meaty finger is just get a little bit of the meat of the finger. You can flick it right out, right? Get a little bit of the meat of the finger in there. You, now, of course, you got to get the right angle because I'm not a lefty. Okay, let me... And don't put your finger on the river lock, right? So that's the other thing to... So good. get down. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I'm not a lefty guy. So over here, I actually have the the um, my the crack here of my finger is right over the river lock, so I'm never on it. So if I was to do that over here, I'd probably be maybe like, let's see here. I'm trying to do equivalent as a lefty. How would I hold that? It would be probably like this. Oh, yeah, that works. Okay. So that's, again, yeah, that makes it much easier. Sure. So, okay, so what I do over here is I always put my finger right here with this part of the fingers touching right here. This is raised off the, the lock itself, so I don't I don't interfere with the lock because, you, as you can see, as soon as you open the blade, you see how that moves? That's because that this is called a crossbar lock or the crossbar pin or the river lock pin, whatever you want to call it, right? It rolls on the back of the blade, and then there's a little cut out there, and that's the tang of the blade, and it engages, and it locks it in place like that. And, yeah, and see, there's no play now. 
once I tighten that pivot up. So it was just a little loose. That's what it was. And then when you close it, it there's a little flat part here. I don't know if you can see that back here. This little part right here, this is the flat part. This is when it closes. That's kind of like equivalent to a detent ball going into the hole of the blade where it goes into the detent hole on the blade. And that detent ball uh, on the lock bar rides across. And now here's the detent ball, and then here's the blade, and it rides across. And once it hits the hole, it, it goes down into the detent hole. And that's what locks it. And then when you break the detent, it literally pops out. That the 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 the, the Static energy builds up until it breaks that detent and then it turns into kinetic energy and it just flies and that's what gives you that crisp detent. Over here, when you hear that flick, there's that little detent ball. I don't know if you can, we can see it, but there's a detent ball right in here. And it and then there's a, as it rides across, I don't know if it's going to, yeah, because they're really good about hiding the detent ball. You don't see it. Some places will let you see it. But when, let me show you when the blade comes down. That, that that liner lock is going to pop right a little bit because it, it the ball goes in. So watch this. You see how it moved right a little bit? There's now a space there, and when I open it up, watch this. When I open this up, let me see if I can do it. I'm showing you here. Ah, I'm blocking the view because I have to do it this way. So when I open this up, you'll see that little space right there. That goes away. So watch this. See? And that's it going out of the detent, and there's I have to get pressure going. You can see my finger starts to push. It's resisting, and then... Once I break it, I go there. Now, I did that as lightly as I could to show you, but typically when you flick it, it's a nice detent uh, reverse flick and works well this way as, as well, too. Okay, so that's nice. That's the equivalent of this little groove that we're seeing right in there. That's like the detent ball, and this would be the detent hole, and this would be acting like a detent ball, except it's a detent um, post or, 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 or bar. Right, so that's what would be equivalent, and that's why when as soon as you break that, you see it moves. It's already moving out of it. It's either in there, or it's not, but it's it rolls. Everything is perfectly spherical, so it's holding in there, and the the mega springs is what pushes it in there, keeps it locked in there, and you're now going against the spring. You're pushing back against the spring, and that's resisting you. Once you clear it, now you're on this part, this roll, this round back part, until you hit that little part right there. You see that? That's that where it's a little dark part there. That's the oil or whatever that's touched right there that makes the contact, and that's what locks in place. And so sometimes I can go in here, and let's see, we can just clear that off. That sometimes might be some of the stickiness, right? It could be stuff that was left over from manufacturing. Not always, but sometimes. I can go in here and I can clear that off a little bit and clean that off, and sometimes it makes it a little less sticky. Let's see. There you go. So nice, nice. Um, so it says no oil needed, and I believe that's because of the way the the over here the um, the lock bar the um, I forget the name of the term. Oh, I'm gonna have to. I feel like I gotta look it up here in a little bit. But again, if I remember, I'll have it up here. If not, I'll have already posted it down below in the description. But where you saw it in the very beginning of the video, right? Um, but that's really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. All right, very cool. Now, I will tell you, as a personal note, um, I would probably, I wouldn't worry too much about these screws in there unless I never Loctite it my pen, which I'm going to do, um, because those are never going to get close enough as far as I'm concerned. But if I was really, truly, truly concerned, I would take that and I would just file them down a little bit, just to the point where they're not sticking out, right? Uh, on this side, there's nothing on this side, but on this one, you can see it back here as well, right there. Uh, well, let's zoom in a little bit probably help you out. So you can see right there, right? There's the, and the two screws that we're talking about over here are right here and right here. They're not close. They're really not. They look like they're close and they may scare you because everything's reflective in there and I get it, but you can just take it out and just do a little file and just file them and then you know you're, you're fine if that's a real concern. I'm not, but just something to keep in mind. I know some people pointed it out and I think it's a fair question. I think it's a fair question to keep in mind so that you're aware of it. All right, so let's do some nice close since we're here, let's do some nice close-up of the blade. Stone washed, nice little TRM logo, nice big thumb hole there. It works. It's small, and some people find it difficult, but that's because they're used to only using their nail. But you got to use the meat of your finger, right? And here's the scale. You can see that nice G10 chamfering all the way around. There's the river lock, which is the crossbar lock. That's their name for it. A T10 screw there, and I believe these are all T6s. And then over here, we can see the backside. Here's a titanium um, deep pocket carry clip. 
gives you relatively deep carry all the way up to about right there so it barely sticks out if you find this a little aggressive because this g10 is pretty 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 got some grip to it right you can always take the clip off and then just file that little section right there with a little nail file or a little sand just a little bit of sandpaper i would rub it literally right where it's at i would literally just rub that little spot right where that contact point is and you should be perfectly fine you don't even have to mess with the rest of it and it will be totally invisible to the rest of the thing if that is a concern or you have it gripping too much but hey if if the g10 is not for you they're going to come out with other cool scales they really will i fully expect the lizard uh, texture skin scale or their plain tie scale I, I bet they'll have carbon fiber i bet they'll have fat carbon fiber i'll bet they'll have their um, what is it the g11 or g12 whatever the, that's yellow one it's not ultim it's something else right and then some other things right and then over here we have the magna cut there's the minimal logo trm usa magna cut it's very minimal uh, some people would prefer nothing at all but i mean if you're going to do this this is very subtle small discreet it's not in your face it's not blown up it's just trm usa magna cut it's always nice to point out usa so you know it's a usa made knife love up here everything's nice and rounded no sharp edges on the top you can feel that it's definitely not a nail scraper it's very smooth but i think you could still if you had a ferris rod you could still definitely use it on that the tip comes to pretty thin tip you can see that and it's going to be nice for poking into dog food cat food fertilizer mulch but it's pretty robust blade so it's going to give a nice cut it's a full almost a full flat grind it comes to about right up here but it does come to a nice thin edge you can see that really really nice thin edge can we, can we get a nice view of that so it's it's definitely going to be a slicer i can tell you that much so i like that a lot then we're looking on the inside here it's got steel liners g10 around it um, you know you have your omega places in here for your omega springs and stuff and then you're going to have the washers over here but they're not washers they use their special um bearings steel bearings of some sort i can't remember the name of it it's on their website but that's what gives it this action right it's really nice now i can get that with phosphor bronze too but you know it's nice when they do it with, with what they use so there we go that is let me try that again get my finger up here so i'm not touching the and i'm still doing it because i gotta go a little higher and be trusted right there we go much easier when you go a little higher like now i'm doing it like a like a i'm holding it like i'm a right i'm a left-handed person holding it like a like a right-handed person would uh almost <laughs> yeah i'm not i'm not a lefty so for me sometimes it's not a natural motion and for those of you who are left-handed you probably laugh at me but i bet you have the same struggles as you as a doing it right-handed as a lefty right so i suspect that's not, i'm not alone in that regard now you can see how aggressive that is it's uh my skin, skin's a little dry we were outside yesterday and you can see it's already kind of giving some character and distinction and if i use oils that's definitely going to change things up on it so really 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 cool little knife um yeah they told me to hold on to it for a while do some reviews so i don't know how soon this is going to be going up as a giveaway just so you know probably be a bit of a while but i definitely want to use this knife this is one i'm going to use okay i'm going to use and carry it so when i do give a giveaway this is not one of these that's been you know pristinely handled i want to use this because i really like the shape of it and if i like it enough then i will buy another one for the giveaway and keep it right but i want to get a hands on this this is a size i can really use this is a knife that feels really good in the hand I knew it as soon as I handled it at Blade Show Texas, the prototype. I couldn't even, this is one thing I couldn't do at Blade Show Texas, by the way, was this. Because he hadn't heat treated the steel yet. <laughs> and it could, you know, without heat treated steel, it could break. It could mess it up. It could dent it and soft and bend it. And so you, it would get all weird if it did that. So you had to, over there, you had to do this. Open it gently, right? You had to be gentle. But here I can, now it's heat treated Magna Cut 63 or 62, 63. I forget what their HRC is. It's uh it's nice it's nice i can use it and, and abuse it so to speak so i like that all right just out of, just out of curiosity we gotta cut something right let's get a little piece of paper here because this is a factory edge mind you this factory edge is not sharpened or anything so let's just see if i strop it it's going to be beautiful that's the nice thing about it when you get a machine sharpened edge sometimes you have a little burr and the burr can catch but if you strop it then you know 
And as you know, I like to see what is that edge, because that looks to me like it's a 7, 8, 18, 17 degree edge. It looks a pretty, pretty drop sort of angle. That feels like it might be around 17. Let's see that. Yeah, that's probably like 17, 18 degrees. Let's see it in the back going. All right, now real quick, I'm going to look at both sides here real quick. Look at the edge angle on this side here. It's interesting. Almost, 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 almost has a little bit of a recurve look right there. And I'm not sure if that's intentional, but I wonder if that's from the sharpening, but it almost, it's so faint. It looks flat, but it almost looks like it could have a little recurve. But I'm going to say probably on this side, maybe it's about 18 to 20 degrees. Yeah, 18 to 20 degrees is what I feel like it is. Now I'm curious because I want to... Where's my piece of paper? I already threw it out. Oh, I'm going to grab another piece of paper. Let's see if that made a difference. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no catching anymore. All right, so I think I think what we're dealing with was just like a the, the belt sharpening. Oh, there was like a little burr or something on there. So, and that you know, they're not gonna as many as they make in small shop as they are. They're not gonna go and leather strop every knife like this. That's kind of up to you. But this is a cool way. If you didn't know, this is a cool way to maintain your edge. You don't have to sharpen it all the time. If after you use it for a day or a couple of days, you just go in and do a little leather stropping like this. Any little burrs, any little bends, whatever. But kind of bring that edge right back, freshen it up. That way you don't have to sharpen all the time and, and you know, consume your edge, right? Definitely has a little sharpening troll right there. You're not going to hit that smile for, you know, for a while. But I don't do a lot of crazy sharpening on mine because I always strop them a lot. So I keep the edge pretty similar there. All right, so doing left-handed, it's a little sticky on the left hand like it was in the right hand when I first got it, but I haven't done a whole lot of this. So I think if I do this, I'm going to break it in on both sides, right? So over here, that part is gone. So, yeah, there we go. All right, very, very cool. Neat, neat, neat little knife. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, definitely, oh, I was going to, real quick, if you want to hang around, we're going to do this super fast. We're going to do a quick centering of the blade because we are off to the left just a hair. So all you need is a little piece of paper like this. I use a little post-it note. I fold it over just a few times, right? I'm just showing you from a fresh piece of note. Get a nice little thickness. What you're going to do is this is going to go into the blade. And now we have to, we have to take the, we have to loosen the pivot. We're not taking it off. We're just loosening it. So here's my T10 that I had earlier. And then I'll probably put a little, so I'll loosen that. And then I'm going to get my T6 over here for these. You loosen the body screws just a little bit. And I don't know if that loosens this over here, but we'll we'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna just take it out. I'm not taking it apart. We're not taking this apart. I said please don't take it apart, right? We're just gonna look underneath the scale. One thing I did want to see: does the scale come right off? No, it doesn't come right off. Okay, because they you know like the other ones, you could do a full scale swap, and that would be cool. All right, so they heat treated the, the the scale. That's really cool. I like that. All right, and there's the pivots, captive pivot. I wonder. Yeah, I wonder if that's a. I really, I gotta look that up again. What what there? If it's a phosphor bronze or whatever it is there. So that's cool. There's the omega spring. And that is steel, right? Yep, steel. So this is heat treated or treated in a way. I like that. I wonder if that's part of the process. I like it because you can see that. It looks almost anodized, like bronze or something. Very, very cool. I just wanted to look at that real quick. We're not going to take it apart. We just take a quick gander at it. Actually, you know what? In order for this to work the best way, what I am going to do is you need to loosen for centering. You have to loosen the body screws just a bit. So typically, I just loosen these just a hair. Typically they have Loctite. See, notice there's no Loctite on that one. I wonder if it just missed it. Okay, so now 
I'm going to open this up. I'll bring this in like this. Since I took my screws off on that side, centering the, the benefit of me taking those screws off, you see before, you know how those screws stuck out a little bit there? If I have to push it out that way, I'm not going to be pushing the blade against the screw, so I don't have to worry about it scratching it, right? So there is that part, and that's another reason maybe to consider, if you want it to yourself, to do that. So then you put this in here like this, and you're pushing the blade right. Now I'm going to tighten the pivot over a little bit more than normal, right? So you hold that in place. Now that's the part right there that should fix it. So at this part, I would take this out, and we're dead center. So now I can come back here. I'm going to loosen this pivot up again. And I'm going to take it off because I need to tighten the body screws back up. Okay, so that's what we're going to do real quick. So now I can tighten these two body, the three body screws that I had just loosened up. This is I've actually done this with my with my uh, neutron and because sometimes um, when you swap scales out, depending on how tight you put them on there, it can contort the liners a little bit, and then the liners, depending on how they are, will throw the centering off just a bit. See now we're left a little bit, but I don't have the pivot on yet. So the pivot should still bring it right back to center. If it doesn't, then maybe I need to put some Loctite on the screws that hold the liners together. And then at that point, I'll just lock. Maybe they're a little over tightened and it's kind of causing what I call a little contortional little warpage. And it's calling like a, a force that's moving it in a way contrary. So here we are nice and back. And yeah, look at that dead center now. And see, I got to look at the inside without taking it apart. So I'm being very good, and I'm not taking it apart. So unless Marianne or Hillary shouldn't be mad at me. But we got a chance to sneak a peek on the inside, which is really cool. I think it's really cool. But we're not violating anything. We're just, what we're doing is doing a centering. There we are. Now we're back to where we should be, nice and centered. Now this. All right, so that moves it just a little bit. So there we go. We're nice and centered. We're back to where we want it to be. That was fun. That was fun. All right, I'm going to make sure I'm not over tight on this thing here. I like to just want to start to feel the resistance. Let's see. No blade play. There we are. Very good. So there we are. Put my tool to the side. A little piece of paper for the centering. Very good. All right, so that's that's kind of the, the short and sweet to it. That's kind of what you do almost with a liner lock, frame lock even, crossbar lock, right? Um, first you do is you loosen the pivot and loosen the body screws. You put that piece of paper, whichever way it's favoring, you put the paper in there to push it away from it, right? So it was favoring left. I pushed it right. You tighten your pivot a little bit tighter than normal, right? You don't, don't go crazy. Don't break it. Don't bend stuff. Just a little tighter than normal, right? Then you come back. You take that out, and then we'll... Uh, we, we tighten the body screws. Now, I had to put that in first because I was doing this. Then you tighten the body screws. And then uh, come back here and tighten this. And then when I took it out, it should be nice and centered. So that is that is what you do. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So thank you to TRM, um, Three, River, Three Rivers Manufacturing, for allowing me to check this out. Appreciate you guys. This is a cool. This is the Bulldog. G10 Bulldog Magna Cut. Like I said, very cool. Very close in size to the Neutron. I think it's a really cool knife. I'm going to be checking this out, doing doing my full review, talking about everything on this thing, my experience with it, and what I think about it. Uh, going to be honest and truthful with it, you know. Um, it still has a little lock stick. I think that's going to resolve itself, right? Those are things that I keep an eye out for, right? If the lock stick never resolves itself, you know, that would be an issue. But I've never found one uh, crossbar lock where I haven't been able to get past that. But, you know, we'll keep an eye on that, right? That's always worth noting. Um, and then uh, we'll just kind of keep trying it, you know, using it. It's, it's a nice shape, though. I really like it. It's a very comfortable, user-friendly kind of size knife. So I dig that. Hey, if you found this content fun, interesting, worthwhile, or informative, would you please consider hitting the like button down below? And if you've already hit that like button, would you please consider hitting the subscribe button down below? Subscribing and liking the videos really helps out the channel. allows the channel to produce more content, do more things, ultimately do more things for you guys. So thank you. Thank you to everyone who watches the videos, who likes the videos, who enjoys the videos. It's part of the live stream. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you. If you haven't already, hit that notification button as well down below so you can be notified of future content like this video. And a big shout out, thank you to my channel members. I appreciate you guys. You guys 
allow me to do things way sooner than I ever thought I would ever be able to do. And I am so appreciative of every one of you, those who've been here from the beginning, who joined along the way, and who became members recently. I appreciate you all so, so very much. Just want you to know that. And uh, yeah, I'm humbled by that. I do two things as a special thank you to my channel members. I do a once a month members exclusive giveaway. Try to make sure it's a really nice giveaway, something really good and enjoyable for them. And then I also try to, um, you know, that, that happens every month. It's better than the kind of like the, we do a regular giveaway, like a budget banger, kind of a nice knife like that. But for the members, it's a little nicer. Absolutely. As long as you, you know, you've been so generous to me, I want to be generous back to you as long as I can af do afford that. Because your, your generos generosity and memberships allows me to be generous back. So I appreciate that. And also I do send every brand new channel member a sticker, a channel member sticker and a little thank you note saying thank you. Thank you for becoming a channel member. I appreciate you. Uh, if you're a brand new channel member and you would like one of those channel stickers, email me. It, the address is going to be in the channel page, the home page. It'll be at the bottom. You'll see email. You can do that or on the live streams. I'll usually provide my email address there. You can email me with your name and address and I'd love to mail you a sticker and a little thank you. So appreciate that. If you've been a channel member all along or you were a channel member before and became a member again, and you're a member right now and you've never gotten a channel member sticker, never asked for one, you can email me too because I'd love to send you one if you would like one, right? It's my way to say thank you. All right, that's a big shout out. Big thank you to all you guys out there. I do appreciate every one of you guys so, so very much. Thank you for being part of this channel, being part of everything. You guys rock. I appreciate you. If you haven't already, check me out over on Instagram at Rob's underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on Instagram at Rob's underscore nerdy underscore knives. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and a great week. Bye.